Morning everybody. Well, today we're on the wait and return. It's going to happen sooner or later. Um, it's the 29th of November and it should be mega busy. Should have my choice of jobs. But I've been struggling. I've been getting jobs. Not the greatest. Um, and then the, also I'm competing against the other two lorries. Well, they filled up their jobs around about half four last night. And one pings up and it's been on an off all day. Seven and a half ton, which is nice. No wait to... Um, to have to haul around like you know um, and it's going from Slough which is no difference to me uh, in time as Bedford or Aylesbury but you know when it's Slough you're fighting the traffic and it's picking up at 9 so you want to try and beat the traffic so we got up a little bit earlier it's 7 o'clock here that's more than enough time for me to get to Slough and if I get there early there's a chance I can get it on early and it's Slough to Birmingham not zone I hope it's not zone um, better not be zone uh, two hour wait while you swap it over and then back down to Slough again. I missed the two hour wait bit. The woman run me up and said two hour wait and I went yeah. Because I thought well that's okay. Get it on at nine, on by ten, Birmingham by twelve, change by two, back to Slough by four, drop by five, back home at six. Things us it's the 29th of November which is my wife's birthday. <laughs> so I'm hoping it all goes according to plan. Uh, there might be some hoping that we get it loaded quickly. There's hoping the traffic goes my way, and there may even even be. I've got to wait for two hours while they re shrink wrap the pallets. There may even be a case of, would you like me to help you re shrink wrap the pallets, lads? We'll get it done a bit quicker. So, anyway, it's a bit dark, so I'm just going to head off, and I'll catch up with you in the daylight. Off we go. This is why we leave earlier when we're going to do the 20 odd mile trip to Slough at half past seven in the morning. Of course, the more astute out there, because it's probably long gone by the time this video goes out, will realise that the 29th of November is also another significant day in the calendar, because it's, um, it's the England-Wales match in the World Cup. And I'm useless at sport. I know nothing about sport. I've said before when all my mates were going to football, I was selling records and done Neil Keynes Market. Um, so I rang the local pub and went, uh, can we have a table for seven? Because it's me, the wife, um, more than her boyfriend, the mum and dad, and the sister-in-law's coming down. And, and he went, you do realise it's the England Wealth Cup that night? I went, ah. I have to get back to you on that one. So, it's just a Chinese around the house, I think. Chinese were a tie. We're having a tie. She likes a tie. So, but I have still got to be back in time for it. Because the in-laws are there. And they, you know, they don't, they're they in their 70s now. They don't like to eat too late. You know, half five's a good time. You know, it's, you know, at 12 o'clock, the geese is looking at his watch thinking, good, I'm going to have a sandwich now. So, um, yeah, so the race is definitely on. Um, we, we're still facing tons of traffic. I'm in Denham now. I've just gone past a beautiful new building bridge. It was quite exciting. Um, I wonder if that would be a bridge. That's 4.8. That would be all right. Um, yeah, we're still looking at half hour. Half hour, we've got a bit more light. We're going to be due there at 25 to 9, which is fine. Because like I said, chances are by I get there, half a quarter to nine, still on track. Right, we're here. Um, 10 to 9. There you go, what we got on the clock. I've been driving for an hour and 41 to Slough. It's only right, it's what, 30 miles? Is what it is. And a bit of a trick you won't have find, but fortunately I've been here before. I picked up from a place just across the road. So, well, I'm here and I'm on time. Let's go see how long it takes to get, get them to load us. Morning, sir. How are you doing? Uh, I've got. Sorry, I've been around to your breakfast. Go on. Uh, I've got a connection with you guys. I'm picking up, taking it to Birmingham, and then bringing it back again. Oh, 
Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Well, that was comical. Put the towel lift out. He came out with a fork truck. <laughs> but anyway, I've got a new pump truck. Look at this. I had to replace the other one. We found that they do, um, they do seconds, which means they own as dear. The only problem is when you buy the second, you kind of got to take what they've got rather than um, what you actually want. So save yourself 32 quid and ended up with a pump truck with 120 on the forks rather than 100, which is easier for the bank. Having said that, it's neither in nor there. The, 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 the bed's long enough on 120 a day. Oh, and you might want to see what I've had to pick up today. In my 18 tonne truck, just pumping up the new truck here, I'm connecting that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blank pallets and a box, which I think has got some shrink wrap in it. Which leads you to believe if they had that up there, they'd probably only have to pay for it one way. Still, I'm not complaining because it is now five to nine and I'm loading ready to go. Looking good. And we're off, lovely. Loaded in under 15 minutes, which is nice. Uh, and I say all I've got on board is seven blank pallets and a box of what looks like shrink wrap. I'm trying to get to the bottom of the mystery as we all do. Uh, I've stuck my destination point in the sat nav, we say like that. Um, two hours, that's not bad. We're going to be in Birmingham at 11, so allow two hours to load. That means we should be in uh, out of Birmingham at one. Back in Snell for three, half three. Should be unloaded with forks nice and quickly. It looks like that's a good thing. I know where I'm going back to, I know where the place is. So again, small distribution centre. Um, unloaded in 15 minutes, I should think when I get back to Snell. Um, oh, what's that say? Half three, out of there by four. Should be on by about a five, should be on by about tea time, should be cool. I mean, remember the breaks to be had in between there and all that kind of stuff. If I've got to have a two hour break in Birmingham, I'll get my rest in there. Um, yeah, the, the, the mystery is uh, the postcode doesn't exist, of course, it doesn't. Um, so I've got, and the address is a bit vague, but I've googled it and it strikes me it's an airport, which leads me to believe that's why you've got to allow the two hours for wrapping and um, you know the waiting and all that it could be air freight it could be a right pain to get it out of the other side it's like well we haven't really paid it to make we can't take it but i've got i'm doing as i'm told that's all you can do so i'm on my way like i say i'm going to be there hopefully just before 11 o'clock i have rung the shipper and i also have rung the lady um on the booking just to double check i'm going the right way that's a tight bridge down there ain't um yeah Wait and see, see what happens, eh? Wait and return. Yeah, I spoke to him. I'm a moron. I mean, loads of people going, yeah, Pete, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I rang her, and as I was ringing her, I thought, I think I wrote JQ instead of QJ in the postcodes. <laughs> Real schoolboy error, that. Really should have double checked that one, but uh, it is airport way, so it is airporty. So it is, uh, I mean, now I know that the, the sat nav is working properly, I can see it's out of way. Um, so it probably is, when I turn around and say, is there any chance I can come in and give you a hand wrapping up the pallets? I dare say they're gonna say no, because it's airport security and you're a nefarious looking chap, aren't you? Would we let the likes of you into somewhere where there is, um, you know, sort of contraband goods and imported goods? Absolutely not, and they would be very wise not to. As far as an ex-market trader, I just end up looking around at things I can potentially steal. That's not true. That's not true. I was a good market trader. I just sold above board goods. 
and never did anything. It's all nefarious or anything. Because none of us do. We're all lovely. Anyway, so yeah, I've got the postcode locked in now. Um, hour and three quarters. Off we go. Right, having a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> there is a six foot six restriction somewhere in Slough. Uh, I know I've come across it because so I've come across it in a Luton before and I had to go round and round trying to get out of the way, couldn't get out of the way. Um, both road lords and, um, oh, someone's coming this way, uh, road lords and ways took me to it back in the day and now I've just faced it in a 18 ton truck. And there was a geezer on the other side also in an 18 ton truck. I'm glad you just did what I just did. Uh, and you look at it and you think, well, can I get through six foot six? No, that's a really bad idea. Uh, so then I had to reverse it. I've never had to do that before. I've often wondered what would be the situation, but I've had to reverse it um, back blindly. Well, back just back on my own, no banksman or anything like that, you know. And there's a corner. I thought if I reverse it back to the corner, I can go in the opposite direction because there's a way out. And of course, as you reverse it, people behind, you know, come at you in cars, so you have to stop. You have to look at them, here they come, stop. The worst bit was when I got the corner and I just went to go and it was blind, the keys come around the other way and I quickly stopped and so did he, it's fine. Um, what, they fit into two different categories. The ones with brains and the ones with no brains. <laughs> the ones with brains would be the ones that will stop, give you distance, even reverse back for you and then eventually go around when they can safely. The ones with no brains just stop. And then you have to get out and go, um, you're gonna have to go around, love because there's like, I can't get through up ahead, I'm gonna to have to reverse out of here, like, you know? So, operative word in that word was love. Sorry about that, but it is like. All uh, right, so hopefully, I'm still on track for 11, and it's now seven minutes past 11, and more than that, I'm just going, because the road said, I thought if I just get down this, it's an A road, he said, A road, M, M, I thought, right, I just get here and I'm fine. Oh. Anyhow, this is looking a little bit more promising. Let's hope we hear that motorway soon. Right, we're and here we are. Here we are on the motorway. And we will be on the motorway for probably the next hour and a half. It's a very different kind of driving motorway driving. It's, um, it's easier, it can be more frustrating, particularly when there's a lot of stop start traffic, and it, uh, but particularly when you get stuck in traffic jams, um, <laughs> and it's quite dull, particularly this road, this is the what, M40, and um, I've driven this road in the dark, during the day it's lovely, look around, you. what beautiful surroundings we've got, green surrounded by forest, it's like driving through centre parts. You've got leaves, you've got trees, I love it all, it's all on fire, it's fantastic. Do it in the dark, it's just a long, relatively straight road. It don't look that straight right now, but it is. You turn the wheel very little, it's just boom. Do that for an hour and a half, it gets ever so dull. Um, yeah, I'm really sure I wish I'd take that last bit, if you would have made a good video. But when you're stressed out, and you're like, oh Christ, I've got a width restriction in front of me, and I've got a reverse in back, and I really hope someone doesn't come flying around the corner and get me, and all that kind of stuff, and how far can I reverse it back? Can I turn it round here? Oh, it's a bit muddy, what if I get stuck? I don't know what I'm thinking here, I just went back the way I've been. I've never done that, I've been in that situation before. But, um, just went back the way I came, very slowly, with me beepers going, so people think when they come around the corner, there's something beeping around there. Maybe we might go a bit ginger down this corner after flying around like that in the centre. Um, and oh yeah, I managed mean, the next one took me out. So yeah, so like I say, we're on our way down to the collection. I wonder what I'm going to do about paperwork. Will I have to get them to sign that I've delivered seven empty pallets? Probably not. They might give me paperwork there. I mean, it's going, it's going to be pretty. It's going to be pretty obvious that I've been there. Um, they've got me on a track and all that kind of stuff. So I'll probably get just the guy at the end to sign for goods received, like you know. But yeah, I suppose it's just me and the radio now. I've got Lauren Laverne doing albums of the year, so um, I'm going to get back to the six. And uh, I say, I thought about this earlier on. 
you know, I'm driving down here, it's, I'm like locked in the pipe, four by four. There's probably some ridiculous expression for doing this. Or is that just Captain Napoleon Aliens? I'm not sure. But anyhow, Birmingham, I'm on my way. So the traffic comes out. Oh, that phone call this morning is actually acting in my favour. Um, yeah, they just run me back. The, the firm, I wasn't sure of the postcode, so I rang the customer first, and then I rang the shipper, the people that give me a job. So the customers run me and said, yeah, we've got a terrible reception out there. And I kind of went, okay. I said, no problem, put my hands up, but after a minute, I went, it's pilot error, I'm afraid. I put a job for um, JQ instead of QJ, Q, Q, and he laughed, it was fine. I was getting people on your side, like, you know. And then I went, right, anything I should know about when I get there, are you easy to find? And he said, yeah, no, we're easy to find. And then he goes through, yeah, we're behind the hotel, and you lift the barrier, and I'm thinking, might have taken me five, ten minutes to work that one out. So now I know what I'm, they are expecting me. I've told them what time I'm going to be there, which means I'm not going to get the, oh, you're here at 11. They don't normally get here till 12. We haven't even started yet. So instead they're thinking, right, it's coming. It's going to be here at 11. Let's get the goods ready for 11. Get it all ready to go, and I'll get it off. We'll get it wrapped up, and we'll spin it round. Also, I don't think it's, it's not an airport. So it is an airport, but it's not, you know, it's not like when you go to Stansted, you've got to do sort of Swiss Air or something like that. When you have to wait, and you get reversed in, and the shutter comes down, and then you ain't let out because you're technically kind of on airport property, and it's all security-ish. <coughs> not security, security, but security-ish, like, you know. It's all air freight. So, looking more optimistic, and I might even get the help wrap the ballots. Not that I'm necessarily in any particular keenness to help them wrap the ballots. I'm just keen to get it all done and get back in time to go and buy the wife some flowers for her birthday. Hey! Well, what are we looking at so far? Hour and three minutes. Mr. Smitty. Well, we're nearly there now. There's the old control tower up ahead, over there on the um, on the left, so we're definitely in the right place. Airport way being near the airport, it's not a surprise that, isn't it really? The road has got the most names in the whole of the UK. London Road. Yeah, I used to live on London Road, isn't it? Um, yeah, so we're going to go and do the instructions like you said, it's behind the hotel and into the barrier, and then we'll see what's waiting for us, and we'll see have I got two hours? Have I got three hours? Is there the possibility that they'll let me out? We can get it done quicker. Fingers crossed situation, but we're going to be there at 10 past 11. So, so far, we're making good time. Hello, you must be Sally. Sharon. Sharon, that's hey, it. Sharon. Yes, I am. Yes. Right, okay. See the end near the wall? Yeah, yeah. That is where the drop curve is. Yeah. Is it worth you going in? Reverse it back. Doing a reverse and we'll get it off on the tail. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No worries at all. Cool. Absolute dream. There we go. I um, I managed to get 15 minutes in when they were wrapping the pallets up, and then about what three quarters of an hour or so getting them on, maybe an hour or so getting them all on, um, and we should be in Slough according to the sat nav at ah uh, five past two. Fantastic. I've got to stop for break, of course, so it's going to be slightly longer than that. But, um, yeah, half two. That's not too painful, is it? The guy with the fork is going to take them off. If not, they're coming off on the pump truck. Done in slough, half two, three o'clock, and home in time for the wife's birthday. 
let's know how the job pins up. Couple of other things I meant to mention. Um, firstly, obviously, it wasn't in the zone. I don't have a. You can Google it, kind of. It's not this a bit tricky with Birmingham. My rule of thumb is anything under 20 is zone. So B6, B, uh, or you know, B, B14, B6, B9, that zone. Anything over 20, not zone. B20, and this was B23, B24. So that would be the airport. That wasn't zone. I think B18 is actually not inside the zone. There is one postcode under 20, but it is a bit tricky, it is a bit of a lottery. Normally what you can do is when you look at the job, you can go, where's it going to? And you can go, is that in the centre bit or is that in the actual circle, the outside circle bit? So, you, you know, you ain't going to get it right every time. Sometimes you might vote with a zone price and win and it hasn't. Double prizes. Sometimes the opposite happens and you have to take the rough and smooth. Um, or you, when you ring the ship and go, look, by the way, I'll, I'll be, you have to ring them and go, look, I can do it for this much money as long as it's not in a zone. If it's in a zone, it's going to cost you another 16 50. It should be 50 quid. If you pay ahead of time, it's 50 quid. If you wait for the century of mine, it's 60 and I'm lazy. Um, the second thing is, got a new pump truck. So those, uh, uh, well, I'd say you'd have to be pretty eagle eyed because um, it was on the it was on the, it was on the speedy ramp up for you, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I know. Uh, Basically, one of the drivers, my mate John, who's, who's like, he, he's one of the guys up in Coventry, has been living with his rusty old, only pumps up that much truck. And yeah, probably if we stuck a bit of oil in it, it might be a bit better. But the thing has seen better days. And we keep promising to get a new one. And he came down for the inspection on Saturday. And kind of went, and I went, and, we, and I went, well, did you get that truck for him? He went, oh no, I forgot. So I gave him mine. So I couldn't live with a guy having it any longer. So I went down a pump truck truck, pump, pump truck plane. I got the wrong one, and then I went, to, I was finished early enough yesterday. I managed to fly up to Bill Keynes when I finished in Dickcock and um, pick up a new pump truck. And it's, you can ask them for the seconds. The place I go to, the padded truck warehouse in Bill Keynes, highly recommend it. Good trucks, not too dear, and they will deliver. Um, they have seconds. The problem is, if you do the seconds, got to get the one the, the ones that I didn't realize you might have a choice of four whereas if you want the brand new one yeah yeah but the, the one I've got's got slightly longer forks I don't know saying that I think I've had that size on here before it's been fine but I've got a new system with a pump truck um, it's my million pound making idea which I'll probably obviously share with someone else can do it but it's something I've never worked out my people why are there no markings on the forks of a pump truck. So when you go in into a padding from the front rather from the side, from the side it doesn't really matter, where there should be a line that says Euro and a line that says standard. And that way you know when you're pumping, because you can feel it, you can feel it going over the bumps, dun, 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 dun. But sometimes it's not that like straightforward. And sometimes, you know, you're, you're cranking it all up going, am I through? Have I gone too far through? And then you're cranking it up, you hear it cracking, you go, oh, I'm on the wood, and now I've busted it. So what, just two little lines. You, you could make stickers, sell the stickers so that people could stick them on the front of the fork, and then you'd know exactly where you are. I might do a separate video on it. I might actually get them pump in for my pump truck. <laughs> but don't print my ride. Um, you know, uh, yeah, that was interesting. Now, paint the wagon, that was hilarious. Maybe pin my pump truck. In the meantime, swear, my kind of town. Little Sims has got a song out at the moment. I quite like Little Sims. She's good. Um, and it starts off with all these gospel singers going, how did I get, how did, how did I get here? And I've fallen into the habit of every time adding me on bit in the middle. How did I get here? I came by bus. How did I get here? Today's one, I got a water taxi and then walked the rest of the way. And I don't know if I'm the only one that does this. It's kind of when songs come on the radio. Do you remember that David Gray song, Babylon? He would sing Babylon, and every time he'd sing Babylon, at the end of it, I had to come up with a different thing. So it'd be Babylon, he did five times. Babylon, zoo. Babylon, five. Babylon, five. Babylon, the Hanging Garden song. Doesn't quite work that one, but you can sort of crowbar it in. I did eventually manage to come up with five. 
Um, oh, someone that used to be me and cousin Darren in the van. This, well, there was there was a particular U2 song where we see that you, you, you sew it up and you still see the tear. Had to turn it down for that night because it drove Darren mad. Um, when what's the one where it says? Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air. We would both shout pants over hands. Juvenile, pure and childish. I'm crying, you made us laugh. But you can only do it the first time round. So we've got rules. The second time round, you just had to let it go. And if you missed the first time round, because you turned the song on halfway through, you weren't allowed to do it the second time round. Pants could only be done the first time round. And the other one we used to do was, you remember that song by the witch, Sailor V? In the middle eight, we used to dance with our feet. Which, if you haven't got cruise control, is um, slightly terrifying and mildly dangerous. Or the other way round. Mildly, mildly terrifying and very dangerous. I'm not quite sure. Um, and the first time there was me, Darren and, and Martin, remove was Martin in the van. Martin let out his kids, he didn't know what on earth was going on. But um, yeah, I'm just curious to know, am I the only one that does this? Sings their own lyrics over songs, adds things, takes things away? Probably not. Please feel free to leave comments in the Sunday Q&A. I'll be interested to see what you come up with. In the meantime, we're still on our way to Slough. Uh, yeah, about an hour now. Soon be down. Meet you soon. Well, we're back in Slough. Um, this time we seem to have managed to avoid the six foot six, but I've done this route before. And I know that there is like a very low train line that runs through Slough. So as we can see up there, uh, two and a half metres. Now bearing in mind that's eight foot six and I'm 12 foot 10. I'm going to have a set. I'd take the top of my head off going down there. Um, but I also know there's a way around it. So what we're going to do is just get the road lords up on this one. Have a look here. We're going we're gonna to do uh, road lords rather than um, ways. Ways being on the left, road lords on the right, and that's okay, love. Um, yeah, we're going to go. If I go, you keep going straight for long enough, I go over the bridge. And once I go over the bridge, I've avoided the train line. So we should be there in about five minutes. Make good time. Uh, quarter past two better than anyone could have hoped for so right on we go and here we go over the bridge things that fox you the first time you've done them when i was in a luton going oh no what i couldn't get around it well you've done it two or three times there it is there's the railway line we just go over you go down a bit over and then back. So yeah, we're going to hang, um, hang a left down here, and I've just got to try to remember where I went this morning, rather than having to go around and turn around. And then like I say we should be tipping round right about well, four past two. Fantastic, home. Here we are. That's it. Lovely. It went better than I expected. Now all I've got to do is pray that everything's working in there. Go and knock on the door. Um, I know they've got a fork truck, so hopefully it's coming off sideways with the forks. We'll open the curtain this time rather than trying to muck about trying to get it through the back. And then I'm done. Off to buy the wife a bunch of flowers and then home for a birthday tea. What's not to like? How's your day been, okay? How's your day been? Living the dream? 
And that's it. Oh, if only they all could be that easy. I'm done. It's about quarter to three. Uh, I'll put it in a sat nav. I shall be back at the yard at 20 to four. Um, say 20 to four. I've got to stop for diesel because we're a bit low on diesel. And of course, petrol stations now sell flowers. Oh, that don't get me wrong, I bought her a present, I bought her a pair of boots, which was shockingly dear. But I don't mind boots, I like boots. I've done videos about boots, I've done many videos about it. I think boots are important. Gotta go after your feet. Um, not that she's short, shoes, she's female. Uh, but yeah, so that's it, all done. So things that really helped that along, firstly, it was a seven and a half ton job, which means it's light, which means it's easy to drive. Secondly, here, ringing them by accident and telling them that you were coming out had probably saved me half an hour to three quarters an hour on my day because all the gear was sitting outside waiting for me. Thirdly, the fact that it is a return. On a normal day, you do two jobs. Pick up, drop off, pick up, drop off. So you've got to do four stops, and the stops are the painful bit. Sometimes loading or unloading in 10 minutes, sometimes loading or unloaded, hour, two hours, three hours, pick a number out of the air. Whereas this one, you've only got to do pick up, drop off, drop off. Three stops, thus reducing the amount of time. You keep, I'm not going that way, it's a small bridge down there. Um, reducing the amount of time that you could be on the road. Um, sorry, that you're waiting. Think Peter. Um, <laughs> third, and, and also the other advantage is you know uh, the pain is also finding the places. Where is it? Where is it? Well, I was lucky because I made the phone call. They told me where the second one was. The first one, was, you know, the pickup was a bit tricky to find, but it wasn't tricky to find the second time because I was here five, six hours ago. So you know, just go the way you know, didn't you? Really? So you know, that's it. The way and return. A nice amount of money. We got a monkey for that. And like I say, I mean, I, I started, I think I left the yard about, I don't know, six, half six, something like that. And I should be back at the yard about half four. So that's a monkey for a 10 hour day. It's not bad going. Um, and no particular stress. Relatively reasonable scores as a pot master. I think like an 18 and a 24. And um, no traffic. And of course, if I hit traffic now, if something goes wrong now, heaven forbid that it will, because it can. I mean slow, I've got the M25 to deal with. I've, I've got, I've still got a way to go. If anything goes wrong now, it's not my fault. I didn't bite off more than I could chew. I didn't turn around and go, well, why are you home so late? Well, I put this job and I, I didn't realize actually that, um, that Scunthorpe was actually a very, very long way away. This one I can go, well, look, I booked it and it worked. You know, I booked it, I done it. I, I was done, I was done in slow, like, you know, 10 to 3 but then something happened on the way home and that can happen anywhere so that's it the successful wait and return at home for cake with candles and flowers and then tomorrow another chance to take care and take money